In this video lesson, we're going to learn about hydrocarbons and we'll learn about the differences between alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. And we'll learn how to name them, draw them, and then identify um, branched alkenes, alkanes, and alkynes. So hydrocarbons are molecules containing carbon and hydrogen only. That's where the name comes from, hydro for hydrogen and carbon. Carbon makes up the structure or the backbone of the molecule, as you can see here. And then hydrogen atoms fill up the empty bonding spaces. In alkanes, all the carbon atoms are joined by single bonds, like this one here. So this would be ethane. Alkenes have at least one double bond in the carbon chain, so this one would be ethene. And then alkynes have at least one triple bond in the carbon chain. So this is an example of eth ethene. So to help us name hydrocarbons, we need to understand the numerical prefixes. So I've included this table that will be help, a helpful resource. So we have one, the prefix is meth, two, the prefix is eth, three is prop, four is bute, five is pent, six is hex, seven is hept, eight is oct, 9 is non, and 10 is dec. So you'll, these will come in handy throughout our entire organic chemistry unit because we will be naming these hydrocarbons. So now we'll learn how to name unbranched alkanes. So these are alkanes that are just in a straight line. The first thing you do is you count the carbon atoms in the chain, and then you pick the correct prefix. And then you add ane to the end. So I've drawn the same molecule two different ways. This is the branched out form Format, and then this is the condensed format. So the branch that one shows you exactly where the hydrogens and carbons are bonded to. And this one just tells you the, you know, CH3, CH2, CH3. It's the same thing as this one. So let's take a look here. So we've got three carbons and they're all single bonds. So we know it's an alkane. So we have to look up the prefix. The prefix for carbon is prop. And then we add ane to the end. So it's propane. So now if we were asked to draw an alkane, um, the, you would first create the carbon backbone. So you draw your carbons. And then you would have hydrogen atoms to fill the empty bonding pairs. So in this example, we have ethane. So eth is for two. So there's two carbons. And then we'll remember carbons can make a four bonds. So we add up the remaining bonding pairs here, like so. And then we draw hydrogen. Like so. Now you could draw in the more condensed format. So that would be CH3, CH3. So the end carbons will always have three hydrogens and all the ones found in the middle of the chain would be CH2 if we're talking about an alkane. So let's do some practice now. So I've recorded seven different examples. Some of them we'll have to draw, some of them we'll have to um, name. So number one, we count the number of carbons. So there's one, two, three, four, five. The prefix for five is pent, so this is pentane. The next one, there's just one, two. This is actually the one we drew, so that's ethane. The next one is one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's hexane. The fourth one, methane, meth is for one carbon, so we'll draw the carbon and then the four hydrogens. So you could draw it like that or you could just record CH4. Because there's nothing else carbon's bonded to, every space is filled up with hydrogen, all four of its bonding pairs. And then butane, that's four. So you could draw it like this, CH3 for the end carbon. CH2, CH2, and then CH3 to end it off. 
non ane is 9 so i'm going to do it in the condensed form too so ch3 so remember it's 9 ch2 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 i've lost count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so that's nonane and then pentane will draw branch though so pentane is 5 so we've got c there's 5 and then we can draw our empty spaces and put hydrogens in like so and that's pentane now naming branched alkanes adds a little bit more of a challenge so you have to look and see which chain of carbon is the longest and the chain doesn't have to be straight so you have to make sure you look at all the different branches and try to find out the longest chain possible you'll number the parent chain starting with the end nearest the first branch then you name the branch it's named as if the piece were a separate molecule except instead of putting ane at the end you'll put yl as the suffix and then you number the position of the branch in the name of the molecule by placing the number in front of the branch name. So for this one, we need to take a look. So we've got, if we count here, one, one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five. It actually, either way, would be the same molecule. So the first thing we have to do is number the carbon atoms in the parent chain. So we pick this one, two, three, four, five. The branch is right here. So the branch has one carbon in it and it's on number two. So the way we number this is it's two methyl and then there's five carbons, so pentane. And that's how you name a branched hydrocarbon. Now drawing branched alkanes, you draw the parent chain first, and then you add the branch chains, or chain, and you fill in the empty body spaces with hydrogen atoms after you've drawn in the branches. So in this example, we're being asked to draw two methyl butane. So the first thing we do is the parent chain. So one, two, three, four, because butane is four. And then two means that it's on the second carbon, so not the very first one, the second one. So, and it's methyl, so CH3. And now we'll fill in the empty bonding pairs. So there'll be one on each of those, there'll be one there, there, and there. So we throw in our hydrogens right here, here, and on the last carbon. Now, if you wanted to, you could draw that collapse form as well. So you would do like CH3, CH with a CH3 coming off the top, and then CH2 and CH3. It's really up to you how you draw it. Either way is correct. So we're going to do some practice with some trickier ones. So if you look at this first one, if you count the chain this way, one, two, three, four, five, it looks like we have five, but if you take a look at the branch up here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's actually going to be, this is the chain, and the closest branch would be on the third carbon. We'll number them just to be sure. So this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, and then this is going to be our branch here. So it's on carbon three and it's one carbon in the branch. So it's going to be three methyl. And then six is hexane. So for the second one, it's also a bending ch um, parent chain. So if you take a look, the longest chain would be found here. So one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And um, if you take a look at numbering, we have to find out which one, on which end does the, the first um, branch happen. So on carbon three, there'd be a branch here. But if you look here, if we count from this end on carbon three, there's actually two branches. So two branches are more important than just one. So we're going to name from that end. So we'll number them first so we don't get mixed up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we actually have three um, of the same group coming off. So we have um, one here, a one carbon branch here, a one carbon branch here, and a one carbon branch here. So to name this one, we're actually going to name the position. So it's three comma three comma seven. Try, we need to put how many of them there are. Try methyl, because it's one carbon, and then it's a nine carbon chain, so nonane. So that's how you would name a multiple branch hydrocarbon. So now we'll practice with some drawing. So the first one, we were told to draw four methyl decane. So decane is 10 carbons. So we'll start drawing those out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And on the fourth carbon in one, two, three, four, there's a methyl. So we'll do that like so. And then we'll fill in the empty spaces. So you'll see here on the carbon number four, because there's a, a group coming off the top, it's not going to be CH2. It's going to be CH. So now we'll put in these hydrogens. And some more. We're getting close to the end. So you can see this format is a little tedious sometimes. So the next one we're going to practice writing in the collapse form. So in our second example, we're being asked to draw 2,2-dimethylpentane. So we'll draw five carbons, like so. And on the second one, there are two methyls. So we're going to do CH3 coming off the top. CH3 coming off the bottom, and you'll see that there's no space for any other bonding pairs. The end carbons always have CH3 unless, you know, there's some other functional group coming off. And then the ones in the middle, except for that one that has the, the branches coming off, will be CH2. And I'm just going to fix that up a little bit, move it closer, and that is how you draw 2,2-dimethylpentane. So now that we're expert at alkanes and branched alkanes, we'll learn how to draw alkenes and alkynes. So to name the alkenes and alkynes, you count the number of carbons in the parent chain and you name the parent chain. And then you number the carbons starting at the end nearest the double or the triple bond, and you number the position of the triple bond. So just remember, alkenes have double bonds and end in ene, and alkynes have triple bonds, bonds and end in ine. So let's take a look at this one. You can see that the double bond is closer to the right-hand side. So this is going to be one, one, two, three, four, five. And we, we name it where the double bond starts. So it is going to be pentene because it's a double bond. And the double bond starts on carbon between carbon two and three, so we're going to call it two pentene, and that's how you name it. So now we'll practice with another example. So we'll start numbering the carbons. So one, two, three, four, five. It's a five carbon uh, chain again, but this time it's pentine because there's a triple bond. 
But in this example as well, there is, the double bond starts on carbon number two. So it's two pentine. So in this example, we're being asked to draw three heptine. So again, we'll do the carbons in the chain. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And on carbon number three, so between three and four, there is a triple bond because it's tine. So right here is the triple bond. And now we can fill in the remaining bonding pairs. So we could do CH3, this is CH2. There's no hydrogens coming off of either of those two because they're sharing all their bonding pairs between themselves. This will be CH2, this will be CH2, and this will be CH3. And then I'm just gonna move that a little closer. Oops. There we go. So that's three heptine. So now that we're experts at alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, we're going to learn about the reactions of hydrocarbons. So there are three that we're going to explore. We're going to look at addition reactions, substitution reactions, and combustion reactions. So as I said before, there's three different types of reactions, and we'll learn which reactions will occur with which type of hydrocarbon. So substitution will happen with alkanes, addition reactions can happen with alkenes and alkynes, and combustion reactions can happen with any hydrocarbon. So alkanes are not very reactive, but they can undergo substitution reactions if they're in the presence of heat or UV light. So if we take a look at this example, we had ethane and bromine, and then they were exposed to heat or UV, and then the bromine um, substituted one of the atoms for one of the hydrogens, so it did a little swap. So there's the bromine there, and the other, the hydrogen leaves there and bonds with the other bromine. So we have um, bromoethane plus hydrogen bromine. Now alkenes and alkynes can undergo addition reactions where the double bond is broken and filled up with um, atoms of a different molecule. So in this example, we have ethene reacting with bromine, and the bromine breaks the double bond, and so there'll be a bromine off each of those, so it'll be two bromines off of the parent chain. So combustion reactions can occur with all hydrocarbons. So a complete combustion means that there's enough oxygen present, so all the hydrocarbon will react to form carbon dioxide and water. So with complete combustion, you have your hydrocarbon with oxygen making the um, carbon dioxide plus water. Incomplete combustion, there's not enough oxygen present, so there'll be a mixture of products formed. So you'll have some carbon dioxide like this one. You'll have water, but then you'll get some remnants of carbon, which is also known as soot, and carbon monoxide, which is a deadly compound. So we need to make sure that when we're burning hydrocarbons as a source of fuel, that we're not burning them in too little oxygen because then we can actually um, die. So carbon monoxide is toxic to humans and it what it does is it competes for oxygen on our red blood cells and then it binds and then we're not delivering oxygen to our bodies and we suffocate. So here's an example of complete combustion. So we've got propane, C3H8, plus five oxygen, makes three carbon dioxide and four water molecules. So there's sufficient oxygen to react all of the propane. In this next example, we've got propane, but we have a limited source of oxygen, so only two oxygens are available per propane molecule. So now we're going to end up with some carbon dioxide, some carbon monoxide, some carbon, and then our water. So this is not what we're trying to achieve when we're burning hydrocarbons.